Instructions. You are going to hear a number of different recordings, and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the real test, you will be given ten minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now, turn to section one. Section one. You will hear a conversation between a customer and a clerk about furniture information. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion, only the conversation relating to this will be played first. Thank you for calling your best furniture information line. In order to deal with all calls effectively, we offer you a number of options. Please listen carefully and press your required number. If you want to know about our latest prices, please press 1. If you want to hear about our new special offers, please press 2. If you want to make a complaint, please press 3. Good afternoon. What can I do for you? Good afternoon. I'd like to know some furniture prices. The press 2 is for special offer, so... Press 2 has been written in the space. Now, we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Thank you for calling your best furniture information line. In order to deal with all calls effectively, we offer you a number of options. Please listen carefully and press your required number. If you want to know about our latest prices, please press 1. If you want to hear about our new special offers, please press 2. If you want to make a complaint, please press 3. Good afternoon. What can I do for you? Good afternoon. I'd like to know some furniture prices. Fine. What about furniture would you like to know? First of all, I'd like to know about beds. I'd like to buy a new bed. Yes. And what kind of bed do you want? Do you have a king-size one? Of course. What colour do you like? I prefer white. Let me check. Yes, we have a new one from France that came in last week. How much is it? It is £189. Do you have any discounts at the moment? If your total cost is over £800, you will get a 15% discount. Great! Do you want this bed? Yes, and I need a light. Where will you fix it in your house? My bedroom. On the ceiling? Yes. Oh, I hope it's in white too. We have a set of white furniture. How about the light? How much is it? It is very cheap, only £69 if you take the bed. OK, I'll take them both. Fine. And anything else? I want to buy a new dinner table for my dining room. What's your requirement? Do you have a round one? Yes. And with four chairs? Not six. That's better. Right. Round with chairs. What's the price of it? The domestic one is £229, but the imported one is £369. The same style? Yes. I'll take the first one. OK. 
The last thing that I need is a wardrobe. A wardrobe? Oh, we have some new styles. Really? I prefer a European design. You are so lucky. We've got a new one yesterday that just came in from Italy. Great. How much is it? It is £399. Mm, a little expensive. Yes, but it is white. Really? That's fine. I'll take it. A good choice. Are you a member? Yes. OK. Can you tell me your details? Now, look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen carefully and answer questions 6 to 10. Let me take down your details first. OK. What's your full name? Daniel Kahn. Could you spell the last name? K-A-H-N. Right. And your address? Hill House, 16 Dave Lane. Could you spell the street name? D-A-V-E. Fine. And your contact number? 44 Seven eight zero one three five. Well, what time do you want your furniture to arrive? How about next week? OK. Morning or the afternoon? Afternoon. How about 1pm to 2pm on Saturday? Sunday is better. OK, on Sunday. Fine. How much is it altogether after the discount? Let me see. The total price is £896 after discount is £760. OK. May I pay by credit card? Of course you can. Oh. Does this price include delivery free? Because you are our member and live not far from us, the fee is free. That's so great. We have a truck to deliver all your orders to your house next Sunday. Can you take down the reference number? Yes. Please tell me. FG0418. Great. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Goodbye. Goodbye. This is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now, turn to section two. Section two. You will hear a conversation about a hot spring resort. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Good afternoon. How can I help you? Good afternoon. I'd like to inquire about some information regarding your resort. What kind of resort would you prefer? I want a hot spring resort, and it is better to have some indoor or outdoor water activities. OK, let me check. How about Tulip Hot Spring Garden Resort? Uh, tell me some details, please. Fine. It is located in the north suburb, 
near Peak Mountains, covering about 66 acres of green land with a refreshing environment. The resort provides various kinds of facilities for sports, entertainment, leisure and meetings. And the best part is its hot spring. Great. Could you give me some introduction about the hot spring? The millennium precipitation of the tulip hot spring was exploited 3,000 metres deep underground. It is a sulphur hot spring. The major ingredient is sulphur. I heard that sulphur, when it's sterilised, is harmless to the human body. Yes, it plays a significant role in softening the skin, hydrating the skin and beautifying the skin. It can lower blood pressure and reduce blood fat. That's so great. How about its temperature? It's 65 degrees Celsius. There are some attentions about the hot spring. Attentions? Yes. The hot spring water contains various minerals which come out, first in black colour, changed to clear water, afterwards with a mineral smell. Adjust water temperature to one's comfort before bathing. OK. And do not bath immediately after drinking. And please take your jewellery off when you are bathing. Fine. Uh, how about water activities? Merry Water World has 56 different water sports for tourists. You can experience four different sauna rooms and 21 different spa pools. For a change, one can try the standard swimming pool, tennis courts and the bowling. Can you tell me the location? Now, look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen carefully and answer questions 16 to 20. Let me show you a map of the resort. Fine. Now we are standing at the reception of the main hall. It is at the bottom of your map and immediately to your left is Villa Part. There are deluxe villas and suites which have their own hot springs. Fine. The large building with a big glass roof behind the main hall is Merry Water World, the water sports centre. Yes, I know. On the top left of the map is the leisure centre. There are sauna baths for women, 4D movie theatre, a kids' room, video games room, a VIP room, a tea house and a beauty salon. Great! And where is the tennis court? It is in the sports centre, which is located between the leisure centre and the tulip garden. Tulip garden? Yes, you can appreciate the beautiful tulips in the garden. Fine. Can you tell me what kind of sports are there in the centre? There is a tennis court, badminton, table tennis, shooting, arrow shooting and climbing. Do you have a restaurant? Of course. The building next to the garden is the restaurant. What dishes does it serve? We have French food, Spanish food, Indian food and Chinese food. Oh, that's so great. If you want to book a villa, please fill in the form. Thank you very much. You're welcome. This is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now, turn to section three. Section three. You will hear a conversation about a student's study. 
First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the study centre of Cardiff University. I am Professor Jody, your student study consultant. I know as a new student, you will meet some troubles with your studies and life. So we will have three consecutive lectures. Study strategies on today, social life, and local snacks on next Monday and Tuesday. I will introduce you to some study skills and answer your questions. Well, first of all, let's talk about some factors which can affect your study. What problems do you meet as a freshman? Yes, Professor. What's the biggest difference between university and middle school regarding study? A good question. I think the biggest difference is that a university student will have to do a lot of work on their own, such as doing research. Do you mean we should read and think independently? Yes, that's the first important factor of being a successful university student. Fine! How about taking more lectures? I heard that they can help our studies. Is that right? Some students prefer to attend more extra lectures to improve themselves, but in fact it might affect their own study. My advice is to use your holiday time. I mean, you should know how to take control of your time and work effectively. Fine. Another factor is to overcome your stress. Many students usually have a feeling of homesickness, particularly for overseas students. There is no family or friends here, so maybe loneliness and heavy studies can lead to great stress. So, I suggest if you come in contact with such troubles, it is a good way to make some new friends or take up some social activities on the weekends. How do we know about the social activities, Professor? You may get the activity schedule from the Student Union. Fine! Now, look at questions 25 to 30. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 25 to 30. Well, let's talk about some study strategies. Where should we begin? How about listening to a lecture? Yes, I am worried about that too. OK, if you cannot keep up with the lecturer, why not prepare a recorder or something like that to record the lecture. Good idea! And I think you should prepare lecture materials in advance and then check your notes with other students after the lecture if you cannot take them all at the lecture. Great! And how about presentations? Do we have to do many presentations? Yes, you will do presentations nearly on all subject lectures. Should we use PowerPoint? Yes, of course. And can we choose a partner to do a presentation together? Maybe or maybe not. Sometimes you can have a group presentation, but you have to do it by yourself on most of the lectures. OK, I know. Professor, I know we have to spend a lot of time reading material. 
I want to know if we can get them from the internet. Sometimes you can read materials at the computer at home. Really? Yes, but you must have a username and password from the computer center. Fine. And usually you will have many academic journals to read, so a proper reading method is very important. What kind of method? The approach I use is skimming. It means to skim the book first to see what's important and what isn't. Do we need to master a skill of analyzing reading? Yes, that's the next important method of reading. The method can help you to remember what you have read. Fine, and how about the assignment? You will write a lot of essays as your assignment. Essays? Yes. How about the strategy of writing essays? First, you should make a good draft plan for writing and pay attention to the deadline. Deadline? Yes. Can we extend that? You could ask your personal tutor. Fine. And before handing in your work to your tutor or department, you should do proofreading first to check form, grammar, spelling and references. OK. If you meet some other problems with your study, you can ask your tutor for help. Well, any other questions? This is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now, turn to section four. Section four. You will hear a conversation about technology. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Welcome to the Magic Earth. I'm Christine. Today we have invited a geographer, Andrew Fleming, the leader from the British Antarctic Survey, to give us an introduction about using satellite to map Antarctic sea ice. Welcome, Andrew Fleming. Thank you, Christine. Well, as you know, cruising in the Southern Ocean isn't always plain sailing. But as it is becoming important to find better ways of navigating safely and avoiding future collisions because of the increasing visitor ships, the Antarctic Polar View Project is using satellites to map the sea ice to help ships find the best way in the vast white continent. There are very large lumps of heavy ice in the water which might look beautiful and white with penguins dancing on top of it, but I believe you do not want to hit it very fast with a ship. Otherwise your ship will be damaged, and therefore navigating through it is an important problem, not only in terms of the safety of the ship, but in terms of the speed of the ship and the efficiency of the ship. So you could have another choice, for example. Take a quicker and cheaper route, rather than spending an excessive amount of time going through an area of very thick ice. The quickest way to travel is to clear water channels, but it is a difficult task to find these routes. 
The area we're dealing with is absolutely enormous. The only way of monitoring that area of ocean effectively is by using satellites. Therefore, we use a satellite named the NVSAT, which is a satellite that collects information and picks up differences in ocean surface roughness. And that helps us to see the difference between open water and the sea ice. Radar allows the Antarctic team to see straight through the clouds down to the surface of the sea. With detailed images, it's even possible to see cracks in the surface, which can lead to dangerous icefalls. Wherever possible, we would use helicopters quite a lot and put them up in the air to map the ice and look for where we might find what we call leads, you know, which are large areas of clear water that the ship might be able to move through. But it is certainly a much more difficult and time-consuming operation. So does the image that you get from the polar view map give a good description of what you're actually seeing out there on the sea? Yes, it does. We cannot yet know clearly about the thickness of the sea ice. But one of the science researchers that we were doing last summer was looking at doing some of that work using satellites as well. So that's going to be quite an exciting development. The map was coloured in various shades of grey, but it didn't take long to spot the difference between the dark, smooth open water and light, textured areas of sea ice. The first step is to take the image merely, which has to be sent to the ship. How about others? Internet connection in the Antarctic and on ships is notoriously poor. And that has meant that we have to compress the image a lot, cut a lot and delete some of the details in the image as a result. Have you solved the problem? Yes. The normal way that we are doing this is by compressing the images into a format known as JPEG 2000. JPEG 2000 allows us to, number one, compress the imagery a lot more. And secondly, it allows us to maintain the geographic position of the image. So it knows where the image is and allows us to position that on a map. And how long does this take? I tested this in January over a very narrow dial-up satellite connection and it took a few minutes. Sure, for us it is an enormous achievement. I mean, we now know fairly well the kind of sea ice conditions we are likely to encounter. So it is a fantastic and useful system. We just need a laptop on the ships. That's great. Thanks to Andrew for his introduction and... This is the end of Section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers. This is the end of the listening text. You now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the listening answer sheet.